Good morning, Wet Shavers, coffee lovers, and podcast listeners everywhere. It's Mark with GeorgeTune.com. It's time for another second cup. So grab a cup of coffee, kick back, relax, put in your earbuds, adjust your speaker volume, and let's talk some wet shaving and a few other things in podcast form. What is Second Cup? Well, Second Cup is a podcast that will give you some additional information that didn't make the Monday morning mailbag deadline. This might be something that is time sensitive. For instance, a sale that could be ending before the next three MB airs, or a piece of late breaking information that viewers have passed along that is equally time sensitive, or something else regarding the wet shaving world that needs to be broadcast in a timely fashion. And we'll also have some time to chit chat and discuss some other things like coffee, movies, streaming shows, books, that sort of thing. So thanks for tuning in to Second Cup. And I hope you subscribe to the podcast where you can also find episodes of the Monday Morning Mailbag in podcast form. I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me. We'll get the show underway in just a moment. Thanks for joining me. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the October 2nd, 2023 episode of Second Cup. How are you this morning? I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me this morning. Maybe you've got something off to the side that you're enjoying with your coffee, uh, a nice cinnamon roll or maybe a, a bagel with a little bit of butter and maybe a little bit of jam on top of that. Boy, <laughs> that is always great. A nice toasted bagel and a cup of coffee. Man, is that ever good. My goodness. And I am enjoying a cup of coffee with you this morning. I am once again uh, right here, Current Cups, the Black Rifle Coffee Company, Silencer Smooth. This is their light roast that I used on the Monday morning mailbag this morning, and I'm enjoying it in my Ohio campfire mug. This is the mug I got from my niece, Kelly. It's got the, um, the state of Ohio in white, and it's kind of got some um, a silhouette of pine trees in it and a star field wrapping around kind of a deep blue color. It's kind of like, a, like, a, like an outdoor nighttime campfire kind of mug. It's ceramic, but it looks like it's um, metallic. But boy, is it a favorite uh, coffee mug. Hang on one minute. I'm just going to take a sip. One minute. Hmm. That really, really is good this morning. And of course, I'm just winding down from having been at the Ohio Wet Shave Meetup uh, on Saturday the 30th. What a wonderful, wonderful get-together. Had a great time meeting everyone and talking wet shaving with everyone. Had some great conversations with David Martin, who is uh, known as Ohio Shaves on YouTube. So check out his channel and the interviews that he conducted with a lot of the uh, fellow wet shavers there. Uh, really talked to a lot of people there. I spoke with Jeremiah from Timeless Razor, had a great conversation with him and got updated on what is going on with Timeless Razor and some of the products that they have uh, to offer. They've got a new razor uh, that is available, a new travel razor. Check it out. We're going to be talking about that in the Monday Morning Mailbag because I just learned about it uh, at the uh, Wet Shave Meetup because uh, Jeremiah and Timeless Razor very kindly uh, offered one of these as a door prize. And somewhat, I can't remember who it was, but uh, they walked away with it. It looked like an absolutely beautiful stainless steel travel razor by Timeless Razor. That was absolutely wonderful. I also caught up with a lot of other wet shavers. Kevin Laird, I talked to him. He had a razor on the piff table that no one picked up. Now, I'm reluctant to... Uh, pick up anything from the uh, PIF table. I would rather have those uh, available for uh, new wet shavers who might be attending for the first time, that sort of thing. But there was one unique razor there that no one, that no one selected. And this was at the end of the meetup. And I was talking to Kevin and I happened to see it. And I said, wow, that's rather interesting. He says, yeah, I, I donated it. Uh, I said, and no one took it. He said, no. And he had donated it last year, and no one took it. And I guess he just kind of uh, took it off the table and uh, took it home and held, held on to it, I guess, and brought it back. And again, no one selected it, but it was so unique, I thought that uh, I asked if I could have it. And he said, sure, and we'll be talking about that on an upcoming Monday morning mailbag. Really a neat, neat razor, so stay tuned for that. 
And what else? Oh, yes, on my way home, because at the end of the meetup, uh, David Martin and I sat down and had this wonderful conversation that he uh, had recorded on video, and I'm sure he'll, he'll be showing that on his uh, channel on Ohio Shaves, and he'll be sending me some of those highlights, and I'll be sharing them. I'll be sharing that conversation and the highlights of it on the Monday Morning Mailbag. But on my way home, I wanted to stop at Grandpa's Cheese Barn. Have you ever heard of Grandpa's Cheese Barn? It's in Ashland, Ohio. Its uh, address is 668 U.S. Highway 250 East, Ashland, Ohio, 44. 44- 805. Grandpa's Cheese Barn has been right there off the highway for years. You'll see the large billboards as you're going north or south on I-71 from Cleveland down to Columbus or from Columbus back up to Cleveland. It's exit 186 off of I-71, and it is just a wonderful destination. Uh, Stop in because they have Uh, wonderful home-smoked meats, specialty cheeses, Amish country jams, jellies, and pickles, local honey and maple syrup, and they also have homemade chocolate and fudge over in their sister store, the uh, Sweeties Chocolate Store. So it's Grandpa's Cheese Barn and Sweeties Chocolates. And I I was running a little late, and they close at 6 o'clock on Saturday, so I phoned, uh, I kind of phoned ahead and asked them if they could put an order for me, put together an order for me and leave it at their back door. And they said, sure, <laughs> that was great. So I got there after hours, but I picked up uh, all the great stuff that I had ordered and paid for with, uh, and paid for with a credit card. Uh, and uh, that was great. I came away with some of their campfire smoked cheddar. I don't know if you can hear that. That's right there, a little block of that. And some of their smoked bacon cheddar cheese. That's also terrific. Here's a, a uh, I got a nice, uh, a nice uh, about two pounds of their Swiss cheese, which is great. And here's a new one that I cracked open. Uh, jalapeno smoked Gouda. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that is wonderful. I wanted a pepper jack which uh, I usually get when I stop there, and I could not remember the name of it. <laughs> I couldn't remember the term pepper jack at, you know, I, when, I, when placing my order. I just could not remember it. But the other thing that I uh, ordered from their sweetie shop, which is just wonderful, and you have to try these, are their uh, Honey Crunch Peanuts. These are peanuts dipped in kind of a honey that hardens a little bit, gives you a little bit of a, a hard honey coating over the peanut, kind of like toffee peanuts, but it's not toffee, it's honey. And my gosh, are these great. And I've got a little little dish here, just a few. Hear that? <laughs> just a few that I'm nibbling on in between sips of my coffee. Well, anyway, so glad that you're joining me this morning. I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me. Hey, let's pay a few bills and then we'll get the show underway. I received a very thoughtful email from viewer Jimmy V Photography. The subject heading was Zen of Shaving. Here's what he wrote. Hi, Mark. Just this morning, I was drawn to again thinking that shaving is like a Zen meditation. All the prep work, the feeling of the lather as it builds in the bowl, the knock of the brush against the bowl, the shaved end filling with the soap of the day aroma, How it transforms from some soapy bubbles blossoming into thick, creamy peaks of lather that cling to the brush and face. The sound and feel of the razor and blade working in harmony, mowing down our beard. Feeling the sensation of the final face rinse and the zing of alum. All culminating in that splash of aftershave cologne and feeling the BBS result. And then the cleanup therapy. Sadly, sending unused lather down the drain as we clean brush and bowl, taking apart the razor, washing and drying it with care, making sure the brush is thoroughly clean, fluffed, and returned to its stand, getting everything ready for a repeat performance for the next day. Shaving time is one of the few times of the day I have no music playing, no distractions, just becoming one with the shave. I really wish that when I was a little kid shaving with my dad that we did the three-pass shave routine. Would have been more time with him and more lather to play with. 
Back then, it was a one-pass affair. Heck, we used Barbasol foam and some Gillette razor. No idea on what blades he used. I wish I had his razor. All I remember was it was a twist to open, and I thought that was so cool. Thinking back, this was like 1960, so maybe it was a fat boy or a slim. We each had our own identical razors. No idea where either have gone to over the years. Oh, well, back to editing Jimmy. Hey, Jimmy, that's absolutely wonderful. You, you certainly painted a great, great picture, and I feel the same way, stepping into the shave den and just being with myself and that shave routine and reflecting on the day ahead or the day that has just ended, depending on when I'm doing my shave. Uh, just going through the routine, and as you say, getting all, getting all that input, all those sounds, all those scents, it's meaningful, and it, it really does make an impact on our life. And it also, I guess you can say, imprints on others in our family around us. As kids, look how we remember and recall our father's shaving. When we get a scent that we bring into our shave den, it instantly, if it's familiar, it instantly brings back a memory of our father or our grandfather or an older brother, uh, etc. Absolutely spot on with your comment here about the zen of shaving. And I think there really is a zen of shaving. You, you go into another place, so to speak, when you're doing that traditional what shave. And I don't think it's the same with an electric razor or a cartridge razor. I think it only happens with the safety razor uh, or even perhaps a straight razor because you have to take your time. You have to pay attention. You have to uh, slow down a little bit. And that uh, slow pace, that, that slower pace allows you to reflect, allows you to think, allows you to just, just be, just kind of be in that moment. You know, Einstein said, uh, he posed the question, why is it that I get my best ideas when I'm shaving? Well, that's because you're, it's just you in the shave. You're by yourself in that shaving den, and you're just taking your time, and your mind is open to all the possibilities, I guess. Yeah, so absolutely wonderful, wonderful email, Jimmy. Thanks so much for sending it along and allowing me to share it with all the listeners this morning. Viewer Rodney Ripplinger very kindly sent along a shave soap from Farmhouse North. Now, we've talked about Farmhouse North before. We've reviewed their shave soaps. Uh, they are tallow and kokum butter shave soaps. They make a really nice lather. And the Farmhouse North brand is a favorite of Rodney Ripplinger's. And he sent along this special edition uh, shave soap from them. This is aged bourbon and pear. Oh, my gosh. Here, I'll just open that up for you. This is, oh, my gosh, is this an absolutely wonderful and exquisite autumn scent because we're talking about shave soaps that we use as the autumn months come upon us. And here we are at the beginning of fall. And this one right here from Farmhouse North, aged bourbon and pear is absolutely fantastic. Check out this scent profile. Crisp pear, apple and lemon with warm vanilla. Autumn spices and aged bourbon combined for the most delicious fall scent around. This one is marvelous. And of course, uh, hang on one more, <laughs> one more, one more sample of the scent. Oh my gosh, is that fantastic. And when you open it up and you look at the soap inside, imprinted there in the soap is Farmhouse North. Wow, that's a really, really nice touch. I'm going to have to show that or take a picture of that before I uh, do my review uh, and before we talk about it on the Monday Morning Mailbag, because I want viewers to see that. That is a really, really nice touch. So I might shoot video of that as a B-roll. If I use this before uh, recording the, uh, the, uh, the next Monday Morning Mailbag, that is a really nice touch. But the labeling is very, very nice. 
And uh, you, know, you know instantly what you're looking at here, aged bourbon and pear, because there's a nice illustration of a pear there. And it just is a really wonderful, wonderful scent. So these are tallow and coke and butter shave soaps from Farmhouse North. And this is a special edition for fall, aged bourbon and pear. Let me give you that scent profile one more time. Crisp pear, apple and lemon with warm vanilla, autumn spices and aged bourbon combined for the most delicious fall scent around. Absolutely, this is really, really terrific. My thanks to Rodney Ripplinger for very kindly sending this one along. We're going to get a review on it, and we're also going to show it on the on the, um, on the next Monday Morning Mailbag. It really is a terrific, terrific scent. Perfect for the fall. From Farmhouse North, uh, special edition, aged bourbon and pear. My thanks to Rodney Ripplinger for very kindly and generously sending this one along to the channel and allowing me to share it with all the viewers and listeners out there. Now, on a previous Monday morning mailbag, we had been talking about Ogallala Bay Rum. Ogallala Bay Rum comes in a blue bottle. And I had remarked that I heard someplace that that blue bottle actually has a function. It keeps the direct sunlight out of it, keeping the product inside fresher longer, as I understood it. Well, viewer Chuck Price commented that that's exactly why the color of the bottle is blue. Now, I'm paraphrasing here because I don't have his comment in front of me, but he was saying that, yes, that's very much why it's a blue-colored bottle. It helps to uh, preserve the freshness and longevity of the contents inside the bottle, uh, just in case it's in direct sunlight, that sort of thing. It functions the same way, much like a beer bottle that is often uh, an amber color or a green color. That helps to keep the product inside fresher, longer, if it's placed in direct sunlight, I guess, or in an environment where light could actually affect the inside of the contents, the inside contents of the bottle, that sort of thing. Anyhow, because of our discussion involving Ogallala Bay Rum and the blue bottle, Chuck Price emailed me the following. I look forward to your thoughts on Ogallala Bay Rum. It's one of my personal favorites. Well, I was very intrigued. I I really wanted to give it a try, and I went up to uh, Amazon, and I looked around and uh, was trying to decide which bay rum to get because they have a, a, a straight bay rum. They've got a bay rum that's mixed with a variety of other scents and oils, uh, that sort of thing. And I just thought, well, you know, I'll give it a little time and kind of just let it turn around in my head before I make a decision. Well, lo and behold, at the Ohio Wet Shave Meetup, at River's Edge Cutlery, they have a shaving section there. And on the top shelf, what did they have? Ogallala Bay Rum Shave Soap and Aftershaves. How about that? So I picked up a couple. I picked up their uh, original Ogallala Genuine Bay Rum Shaving Soap and also their Aftershave and Cologne. And uh, here on the bottle, I got the bottle right here. Hear that? I don't know if you can hear that... Uh, it is a glass bottle, which makes it really, really nice. And here's the shave puck right there in a um, cardboard sleeve. There's no container. It's just a uh, cardboard sleeve of the puck. It's a, genuine, it's, a genuine, it's a generous puck, and it is in a plastic wrap. And it looks like it was uh, $6.99 for four and a half ounces of shave soap. Really nice deal. The aftershave and cologne was $11.99. Uh, actually, on the label, it says pre-shave, aftershave, skin toner. How about that? So it's not really a cologne. It's a pre-shave and an aftershave and a skin toner. It comes with a spray applicator. So I guess you can spray it onto your hands and then slap it on that way. Or uh, maybe just spray it in the air and use it as a cologne, I guess. I'm not entirely sure. But I also bought another variety of their Bay Rum. This is their uh, Genuine Ogallala Bay Rum Shaving Soap. This is Bay Rum and Sweet Orange. So I bought a, a puck of that right here. And I also bought their Ogallala uh, Bay Rum in their uh, Bay Rum and Sweet Orange variety. And on that label, it says Aftershave Cologne Skin Toner. So there might be a little difference between the two uh, Bay Rum aftershaves here. The original uh, Straight Bay Rum 
Uh, looks like it can be used as a pre-shave, whereas the uh, Bay Rum and Sweet Orange, maybe not. I need to do a little more research. And both of them come with spray applicators. And again, great, great price points for both of them. Uh, again, $6.99 for a shave soap puck, four and a half ounces, and $11.99 for a, um, a bottle of uh, this uh, a four and a half fluid ounce, no, four fluid ounces of their aftershave slash cologne slash pre-shave, however it's labeled here. Really, really terrific. So I'm looking forward to trying these out. Now, there is a little tag here that they have on the original Bay Rum bottle, and it reads, From 1870 to 1885, Ogallala was the destination of countless cowboys driving cattle north from Texas to the railhead. It's a sure bet that as the boys hit town, one of their first stops was a barber shop for a bath, shave, and a haircut. After being splashed quite generously with the barber's own special mix of bay rum, he was ready to hit the saloon and talk to the young ladies who were anxious to sell him drinks. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. Uh, the decades have taken their toll on dance hall girls and that great old fragrance, Bay Rum. While we can't do much about the dance hall girls, <laughs> nobody's wives will let them, we can bring back that great old-fashioned fragrance, Bay Rum. Genuine Ogallala Bay Rum is simply the best. Well, we're going to give it a go here on the, uh, on the channel and uh, absolutely get a shave uh, and a review with the original Bay Rum and Aftershave and also the uh, uh, Bay Rum and Sweet Orange Shave Soap and Aftershave. So my thanks to Chuck Price for the inspiration uh, to uh, keep a, a lookout for Ogallala Bay Rum because, as I say, I was uh, just very wonderfully surprised that it was available at River's Edge Cutlery during the Ohio Wet Shave Meetup. So if you're in the Columbus area and you're looking for Ogallala Bay Rum, stop by River's Edge Cutlery. They will have it right there in their shaving section, right there on the top shelf. Thanks again to Chuck Price, and thanks again to everyone at River's Edge Cutlery. Now, before I get out of here, I wanted to mention one more time Grandpa's Cheese Barn. Again, if you find yourself in Ohio driving along I-71, it's 668 U.S. Highway 250 East in Ashland, Ohio, 44085. That's exit 186 off of I-71. It's right there from the exit ramp. It's like a stone's throw from the exit ramp, so you don't have to drive, you know, another half an hour down uh, 250. It's right there next to the highway, and it really is a terrific destination and a great place to visit, and you can get some great, great meats, cheeses, uh, sweets, etc. It really is terrific. Now, if you don't think you're ever going to be in Ohio <laughs> in the near future. They have an online presence where you can order their uh, meats and cheeses uh, online. And that's at www.grandpascheesebarn.com. One more time, www.grandpascheesebarn.com. Easy enough to remember. And you can get up there and uh, order some of their great smoked meats, their specialty cheeses, Amish country jams, jellies and pickles, local honey and maple syrup, and their homemade chocolates and fudge. And don't forget about that uh, honey crunch peanuts. Those are terrific. My gosh, that's definitely a favorite. And also, right here, the jalapeno smoked Gouda. Boy, that is a terrific one. This is the one that they recommended because I couldn't remember Jack Pepper. Jack Pepper's great, but boy, this jalapeno smoked Gouda, that's definitely a new favorite. So get up there to visit them, www.grandpascheesebarn.com. And if you find yourself driving through the state of Ohio on Interstate 71, just get off there at exit 186, right off of I-71. I-71 and 250, exit 186, and you'll find Grandpa's Cheese Barn. And that wraps up another second cup. Thanks so much for tuning in again. I really do appreciate it. I sure hope you enjoyed today's show. If you did, please share, please subscribe. 
and pass it along to a fellow wet shaver or friend. My thanks to everyone who commented and contributed to today's show, and I mean this sincerely. Without you, this microphone would be silent. If Second Cup or the Monday Morning Mailbag aren't showing up in your regular podcast feed, please drop me a line at mondaymailbag at gmail.com and we'll try to get it all sorted out. So again, thank you all very much. I look forward to getting together with you again on these podcast airwaves. Until then, enjoy the day, enjoy your shave, and enjoy that second cup.